two, one. Hey guys, it's August, and welcome to Iron Views Comics, the show where I review Marvel and DC Comics. And today we're doing another crossover, and we're doing this crossover with Key Issues. How are you guys doing? Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Garrick from Key Issues. Yep, and today we'll be talking about our favorite and non-favorite DC Rebirth titles. So, Garrick, if you want to start, like, what are a few of your favorite DC Rebirth titles? And why? Sure. Yeah, so um, two books that really have stood out to me um, have been Batman and Detective Comics. After Rebirth ended, I didn't really know what to expect from Batman. I have seen Tom King on a few other books, and I liked his work decently enough, but it's been a real surprise with the addition of Gotham and Gotham Girl. I really do like these characters a lot. I think it's very interesting dynamic to have in Gotham where... Um, most, if not all, of the superheroes from Gotham are super powerless. So it's very cool to see um, that juxtaposition between these two super powered characters and Batman. Um, so I really like that. I also like Detective Comics, and uh, James Tinian's been doing Batman books for like the past seven, eight years. So he's very familiar with the whole Batman universe. And uh, it's very cool to see that Detective Comics is being able to separate itself from Batman, where in the New 52 we had four different Batman titles at one point, and they all kind of seemed like the same kind of thing. They were all really solo Batman stories that didn't do anything interesting, and Detective Comics is really a team book. And uh, yeah, I really like the way both those books are going right now. Yeah, um, what I feel about those books is... Like, Batman by Tom King is one of my favorites, and like you said, I do like Gotham and Gotham Girl, and I do like in the latest issue how it kind of turns Gotham and Gotham Girl, and we see Gotham kind of being affected by the city and just kind of be broken, and I, I just feel sad because we saw these nice two heroes, like lighthearted heroes in Gotham, but are just being, like, teared apart by the villains. Yeah, for sure, and their characters in the previous issue were very, very interesting to like get the backstory from them because they were kind of in a similar situation that Bruce found himself in when he was a kid, uh, but Batman was there and saved his parents from being murdered, so it stopped really like another... Um, you know, kid who could have been lost to the streets of Gotham. And it was very interesting to see the way that he grew up idolizing Batman and, and wanted to become his own hero along with his sister. So I really like their backstory thus far. Yeah, and also an interesting interesting thing I found in issue three is at the end of that we saw Psycho Pirate, which I was surprised to see that villain. I really don't know how long it's been since we've seen that villain. Yeah, I think the last time Psycho Pirate was in anything was in Blackest Night back in 2007, I believe. Yeah, and that was um, before New 52. Yeah, so it's been quite a while since we've seen Psycho Pirate, so it's really cool to see uh, them making like deep cuts into the DC mythos and trying to find new and interesting villains for Batman to go up against instead of like the classic... Uh, Batman Rogues Gallery, which you really want to build up for event-level stories and things like that. Yeah, I think some of the Rogues Gallery are going to be featured in All-Star Batman, which I'm very excited for. It's going to be written by Scott Snyder, which who did the last Batman run, which I really liked. Yeah, for sure. So anything Scott Snyder touches is basically gold. I, I really don't dislike anything that I've ever read from him, including, you know, his um, solo runs on, like, image books and his own self-titled stuff. So, uh, yeah, definitely excited to see more Scott Snyder, for yeah. sure. And, like, for Detective Comics, like, the thought, like, for that is I do like that, and it's actually interesting where they're going, where originally, like, Detective Comics was just, like, a Batman book, like, him solving mysteries and, like, trying to save Gotham. With here, with DC Rebirth, they kind of changed it to be kind of still having mysteries and, like, saving Gotham and all that, but mostly changing to, like, a team book, like, having, like, a team. Like, we have Tim Drake, Stephanie Brown, Batwoman, all those characters. 
Yeah, that's definitely something that I really like to see because when you read so many Batman books like I do, since he's my favorite character, you start to get into the same things happening every single week because basically you have Batman books coming out all the time and they're all about Batman and some are good like the Batman Scott Snyder run and some are not so good like the Dark Knight which was canceled very early into the new 52. So it's really cool to see something um, that's able to differentiate itself and stand out as its own kind of story and i appreciate uh the writers and artists for what they're doing on that book for sure yeah me too and i think think those artists are doing very good like david finch is doing really good for the main batman run like for the beginning like for that run i didn't really know what to think of his art like at first i didn't really like it i mean i kind of liked it but i didn't really get hooked but as the story kept going on i got hooked into it and i actually liked the art yeah, David Finch does really, really cool splash pages, um, and you saw that in like the Batman Rebirth number one. Um, yeah. That was when he when he was fighting Calendar Man on like the second page or something. That was really awesome, and he does do great splashes like that. And his uh, panel by panel artwork has become more consistent as the stories have gone on. So that's really cool to see. He's he's definitely a solid choice for a Batman book. Just the way he does very bold and, and dark kind of drawings really lends itself to Gotham. Yeah. So do you have any other like favorite DC Rebirth titles that are already out or coming out? Yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely like the way The Flash is going right now, and I also really like um, Green Arrow. Those are both lighthearted or more lighthearted books and they seem like they're sticking more true to the characters than anything that we saw in the new 52 In the new 52 we got a lot of good green arrow stories but they didn't really feel like green arrow and this he's become more of like a social justice warrior uh he has his goatee back and he's just more lighthearted but he's still like fighting for for the little guy and the flash um, I think they got his character right pretty decently in the new 52, but the stories weren't weren't really good at all, and it seems like they've really upped their game with both of those characters in, in Rebirth. Yeah, I mean, you can't have a Green Arrow story without the goatee. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> I hope, uh, you know, Arrow takes note and, you know, learns how to, how to write, you know, Green Arrow correctly, but that's a discussion for another day. Yeah, and like what I think about those series is that I like them, but I never really got hooked to them mm -hmm. because I was gonna like read the Flash, and I did read the Flash, but I liked it, but I just didn't feel like I was like that hooked, so I kind of just gave up on it and went to other series. Yeah, I mean there are so many Rebirth series. There's you really can't read them all, and it's it's hard to keep. Uh, up to date with all of them, especially if you read as many image books and Marvel books uh, that we do over at Key Issues. It's it's really hard to just keep track of all this rebirth stuff because they have new books coming out every single week. So trying to keep up to date with every book is almost impossible unless you just want to sit down and read comics all the time and you know burn through your wallet. But yeah. Um, there are definitely a lot of good books to pick from, so I mean, don't limit yourself to a few series. Try to like expand as much as you can, or as as much as you're able to, I should say. But you know, if you don't like a book, there's no point in sticking reading with it because there is so much else out there to read from Rebirth. Yeah, and like I think my favorite DC Rebirth titles that are out now is like I said, like Tom King's Batman. That's doing very good. I really like that. And, like, other titles are Action Comics, New Superman, and the Titans run by Dan Abnett, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like those because for New Superman, like, it's a new take on Superman. Like, a, it's a Chinese Superman, but it's not like the Superman we really know because it's a different character. And also, he kind of acts different as, like, our main Superman. As our main Superman acts like a nice, light hard character as this new Superman for China kind of acts a little bit like a jerk and kind of a bully and kind of arrogant, and which I kind of like that. 
Yeah, it's definitely different to see because we all know Clark Kent is the Boy Scout uh, since the day he was conceived. But um, our new Superman is, like he said, he, he's just a different take on the whole Superman thing. And it's it's definitely an interesting book. I, I like the way that he was like given his powers later on in life and he has to really learn how to uh, cope with what's going on and learn how to be a hero because, like he said before, he – He's he's a villain. He's a bully. You know, he's not a very nice guy. So um, definitely a very cool book for yeah. sure. I definitely like the art in there. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely really consistent. Um, as for Titans, it's really cool to see. Teen Titans is my favorite team in all of comic books. I love the Teen Titans. I have the first appearance of Raven. I have the first appearance of Cyborg, Starfire. Nightwing. I yeah. have the first ever Teen Titans book back, you know, from the 60s. So I, I really do like the Teen Titans a lot. And it's really cool to see Wally West, uh, Dick Grayson, uh, Donna Troy, Arsenal, like all these characters back together. It's really cool to see. And I'm also pretty excited for Teen Titans, which comes out in October. Yeah. Um, it's just nice to see like the old team come back, but if you also want to read about a new team, then you can read about like the Teen Titans. You may already know like Raven, Beast Boy, Robin, Starfire, and Kid Flash, which I am excited for that book as well. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, Teen Titans is is one of my favorite comic book properties of all time. So I'm I'm definitely gonna keep up with both of those as long as I can. The Teen Titans runs from uh, New Fifty Two were pretty much hot garbage. Yeah. <laughs> so was it by um, Scott Lobel, I think. Um, I I don't remember honestly who the writer was. I read probably like six issues when it first started, and I was like, ugh. And I I, I I never picked it up after that. It was canceled halfway through, and then they tried to reboot it, and it, it just didn't work. So yeah. hopefully these these are more consistent with what we're used to seeing. Yeah, and what I thought about the New 52, like, Teen Titans, like, because in the beginning, like, I when I was younger, like, I read that, and I was like, wow, this is cool, but when I got older, and I saw that many people didn't really like it, I was like, oh, why don't people like it? And I found out, I'm like, oh, this is why people don't like it. Okay, I agree with these people. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the New Teen Titans is really, like, the Teen Titans run you want to read. Um when when those key characters do get introduced to the Teen Titans, like Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and Cyborg, when they join the team, that's when the, the book really takes off. You know, we get our first appearance of Deathstroke ever in New Teen Titans number two. So if you yeah. want to read classic Teen Titans books and just have a good time reading about them, definitely pick up the new Teen Titans. Yeah. Um, but um, these Rebirth books seem like they're going to be a lot of fun as well, so give those a chance. Yeah, and Titans seem like, here's the difference between Teen Titans and Titans. Where Teen Titans, it's like, basically kind of like a new team that you may already know, and they're just going to like stop bad guys and work as a team and all that. While Titans is kind of bringing back the old team and bringing back old things kind of like from the Titans history and also from kind of DC continuity as well. Like, uh, I think the first issue of of Titans, we saw, um, uh, what, what's that Flash villain, uh, trying to remember, here, hold on, um, I think he's called, like, Abracadabra, mm -hmm. yeah, the, that old villain, I was surprised to see him, I'm like, wow, like, I kind of forgot about this villain, but, like, now they're bringing him back. Yeah, and, and that's, Definitely one thing that I've seen consistently through the entirety of Rebirth is that they are bringing a lot of old villains back that maybe you, you possibly could have forgotten about. And the cool thing um, between Titans and Teen Titans is Titans doesn't have Teen in front of it. And it's really the older um, uh, versions of these characters that are part of Titans. And Teen Titans seems like it's going to be these younger characters, and hopefully they do a crossover. Uh, I mean, Starfire's on Teen Titans, and Nightwing is on Titans, and those two classically have been, like, a big power couple in DC. So I'd really like to see those two get back together, and maybe we'll see the original team and even bring Cyborg in for, like, a crossover event. That would be super awesome for me personally to see. Oh yeah, that would be cool to see. And also, like, I was wondering because I was reading Titans and I read Titans as well. And I read Titans. I'm like, wait, I, we saw like Hawk and Dove and 
I, these other characters, I guess they're not coming back in this comic, which I'm cool with. I was just wondering, I was like, where are these characters come back? I guess not. I mean, I really don't know. Maybe they'll come back in the future. I I really don't know. Yeah, it's it's hard to say how they're going to expand on the team because the, the Rebirth team was pretty much all new characters, and it looks like they're trying to go back to the roots of Teen Titans and bring back some of those classic Titans characters that we all remember reading about and most of us remember seeing in the Teen Titans TV show that was on Cartoon Network that was insanely popular. So definitely like what they're doing. Yeah, and they're also bringing back like old Teen Titan villains, which – like, for example, Mammoth, we have him in the Titans book, and kind of hinted, like, so, like, like other villains, which I really don't know, but I'll be excited to see those old villains come back, or maybe we'll have new villains, I really don't know. Yeah, yeah, definitely excited to see who they bring in as adversaries against these teams, for sure. Hopefully, they bring in some classic characters. Again, I'd really like to see Deathstroke come back and be like a foil for the Teen Titans. I think he works really, really well opposite them, so hopefully that's something cool that we get to see in the future. Yeah, I think Deathstroke would work really well for like the new Teen Titans team, like with all the younger characters and Starfire, because I think like Damien and Deathstroke have kind of had like a like arch right like a rivalness. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it'll be it'll be like interesting to see that and it would actually kinda of make sense. Like Deathstroke wants to get revenge on Damien and by doing that he wants to get revenge on Teen Titans, so he'll hurt them first to get to Damien. Which that would be interesting to see and I don't know if we'll see that but there's a possibility i really don't know but it would be cool to see that yeah for sure yeah and now um action comics it's one of my favorite superman series i really do like this like the writer's doing great the artist is doing great this series is action-packed no pun intended but i just really like this series yeah and it's definitely awesome to see classic um pre-52 post-crisis Superman back because he's the Superman that everybody knows, everybody loves. He's the Superman with the ideals that we all strive to have. Uh, it really sucks the way that they wrote the new 52 Superman and they had to kill him off just because he was such an unliked character and they had to bring back this old Superman. But it's definitely cool to see him back and see how he's dealing with this new world and these familiar faces that he's seen before but doesn't really know now that they're technically different people yeah and what was kind of sad about new 52 superman's death is like as he was like continually dying and as that story was continuing he was kind of turning into like the superman we care about and we actually like yeah if they would have wrote him like that before he was dying you know maybe he wouldn't have to die but sadly they didn't so uh, we have this new book, but yeah, the new Superman is definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, or, I, I mean the like, old Superman, I should say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do like that, and it just like sucks because like this new Fifty Two Superman has had all this hate, but in the end, like at, as his death continues, we start to care about him, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like why didn't they do this in the beginning? Like like you said, why didn't they write him like this in the beginning? Like for for the new Fifty Two for comics, I kind of didn't really get in for the beginning but i got in like during like the middle or, but and i liked it and i'm just sad to see new 52 superman die and actually in the action comics i thought because we see clark kent in that comic which originally i thought was the new 52 version like resurrected as a new character but it seems that it isn't that and which it would have been interesting if it was the new 52 version like coming back and just saying no I'm just Clark Kent I'm not Superman yeah that would have been an interesting dichotomy between the two for sure yeah and it would still like put like new 52 Superman somewhere where we can have him that people will like yeah I think he might end up being resurrected one day but I mean I guess that's that remains to be seen yeah and now we're going to go over to our not-so-favorite DC Rebirth titles, and I think I'm going to start with you, and then we'll go back to me. Sure, yeah, so one book um, from Rebirth that is just not good at all is Justice League. Um, Brian Hitch is one of those guys that it's really touch-and-go with him. He started it's a hit as yeah, yeah. He started as an artist, and then he moved on to writing, and then he did the JLA run from the New 52, 
um, where he wrote and drew the book at the same time. And the Rebirth issue, he, he did that as well. And it was just so generic and boring. And then in Justice League number one, we got more of the same boring story. It didn't really expand on what Rebirth already set up. So it's very, very slow and, and just so generic right now that it's just like not even worth picking up unless you love Tony Daniels art. And I mean, how can you not, but his art is amazing. Spending money on this book every single, um, month right now just doesn't seem worth it to me, but Tony Daniel is definitely one of my favorite comic book artists. So I'm glad he's on the book. I just don't know if Brian Hitch is the right choice. I, I've never really liked any of his stuff. Yeah. And what I really thought about the book, like when I read the rebirth issue, I was like, Oh, I'm interested to read this. And when I read it, I'm just like, wow, I'm, this is bad. Like, I'm sorry, Brian Hinch, but, like, when I reviewed this comic, I said, like, oh, look at that, they're having a new villain that comes from space and shoots out many versions of himself and controls civilians. I wonder where we saw that. Oh, yeah, Starro, which kind of doesn't make sense. I mean, I like reimaginings as, like, the next guy, but maybe change it to, like, something else. Like, Brian Hinch said we're going to get new villains, and I'm just wondering... Is this what our new villains are going to be like, just reimaginings? Which I really don't think so. Like, as we see from, like, as the main Just League series is going on, like, we see in issue one and issue two, we're getting this new mysterious villain we don't know much about. And that's very interesting. I just didn't really like, I mean, I do like reimaginings. I just didn't really enjoy the, like, reimagining of Starro because it was basically another Starro, just bigger and different. And in that Rebirth issue, I didn't like the art one bit. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, like, yeah. I do it was like, I mean, I kind of like his writing, but I don't like his art. Like, it just looks bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he's, he draws very awkward characters a lot of the time. So I think that's really what it is. And especially static characters, when they're just standing there, you're just, it, it, it just looks wrong. Uh, but yeah, like you said, the hive mind alien idea has it's done like 20 times a year in movies and tv you see it all the time yeah big alien comes down sends out smaller versions of itself to take over masses of people and then once you destroy the queen all the underlings die so like we we've seen that so many times it, it's not something that you can get excited for even when uh tony daniels drawing your book so yeah and what I thought about, like, I, I didn't really want to read the Justice League after that, but, like, I heard and I kind of looked at the first issue, like, the real first issue by Tony Daniel and Brian Hitch, and I was like, wait, where's that, like, Starro reimagining? Like, it kind of seemed like in the Rebirth issue, like, the story was going to be, like, about them handling with this new villain that they made. So, I mean, I guess we kind of see it as Batman, like, fights something that's like it, but... It really isn't like it. So, but I do like new villains, and I kind of was interested in this new villain coming to the like issue one, like kind of taking away the Just League's powers, which that's interesting. I just didn't really like that. I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna read Just League. I think Teen Titans and Titans will do good. Yeah, I mean, as long as the story stays so generic. You know, I, I'm going to keep up with Justice League just because that is, like, probably the second most popular book in DC Comics behind Batman. So, I mean, it's really something that you have to keep up on. Uh, in case it does get good, you want to be there because that's the book that's going to extend out to the rest of the universe and really change it. Especially with what we saw in the New 52. I mean, Jeff Johns is, like, the best writer at writing super exciting um you know, universe changing events. So reading his issues every single month was, was very exciting. So, I mean, hopefully it gets better, but right now I'm just kind of not feeling it. Yeah. And what I really didn't like about that is, well, what I liked about it, like Brian Hitch said, like, Oh, we're going to get new villains and we're going to have some of the usual just like villains as cameos, which I like that. I'm like, Oh, that's very interesting. Like, do new villains and like many other writers i think have done that like scott snyder like he's made new villains like the core vowels and dr bloom and that has done very good but while brian hitch did that it kind of didn't really do much good like the new villain in the issue one like justice league like that new villain like that seems interesting but 
if you're going to make reimaginings like Starro, like, don't do that. Like, start with something new. So, I mean, I guess this book is good for new readers who are new to Justice League and haven't read DC Comics, but I think I'm just going to pass on this comic. Yeah, I mean, if you want new readers to pick up Justice League, I would just recommend they pick up Justice League number one by Jeff Johns from New 52 and just read all that. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, so my f- – do you have any other non-favorite DC Rebirth tiles? Um, I mean, there aren't any others that I just strictly don't like. I'm not really – uh, feeling Nightwing all that much. Like I said previously, Teen Titans is one of my favorite things ever. Obviously, Nightwing's going to be part of that. Uh, but his book is just very, very reliant on everything that happened in the New 52. And if you're going to pick up a number one titled book, you want to be able to jump into it and just read it as its own thing in the beginning of a new story. But if you haven't read like Nightwing from the original Kyle Higgins run, if you haven't read... Um, the Justice League tie-ins, if you haven't read Grayson, then you're not going to know what's going on. So that's really a big problem in my eyes, and I think they're probably going to lose readership unless something changes. Yeah, and, well, Nightwing is, I don't think it's not, like, a bad book. It's just a not a book that I'm interested in, mm-hmm. which I'm not saying is a bad book. Again, like, I it seems like many people like it, and it goes an interesting turn, like, with Nightwing kind of doing the spy act again, and that's very interesting, but I just don't know why I'm not hooked. I'm like, wait, like, this book seems interesting, but I feel like I don't want to keep reading it, like, somehow. I really don't know why. Yeah, it's just, it's it's a lot of rehashing what's already happened, so that's probably part of it, but it, it's just not a book that you, you can pick up off the shelves and enjoy, so that, that's really just a, a big problem. Yeah, and I think for my non-favorite DC Rebirth runs is one of the books is Justice League by Brian Hinch, like for right now, until it gets better, which probably it will, I just don't know when, but like for right now, I kind of don't like that book, I don't know where they're going, I mean, we already talked about it, but I just don't like where they're going, I mean, maybe it'll go like another interesting turn, like I'll keep an eye on it, and try to like pick it up, pick it up again and see if it goes an interesting turn and keep reading it and maybe review it again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, again, it's, it's just it's just a generic book right now, so it, it's not really up on my radar, but yeah, we're, we're in agreement. It, it's not a very good book. Yeah, and I think another book I'm not interested in, and I don't really think it'll be, like, maybe it'll be a good DC Rebirth run because, like, Jim Lee will be a part of it, is Suicide Squad, which... I've never really been interested. Like, it's been, like, good, like, sometimes, but it's been bad sometimes because sometimes there's different writers and there can't be a consistent writer. It Sometimes it changes, which, I mean, I kind of don't like that, but whatever, like, I mean, it doesn't mean, like, the story is what's good about, like, a com- comic and, like, the art is g- good for it, but... I've just never really been interested in Justice, I mean, not just like uh, Suicide Squad, because, I mean, sure, it will be like Jim Lee, and the writer seems like he's doing a good job, like, with the Rebirth issue, it's just I've never really been interested, like, this is one of the teams that I think a lot of people like, but just, like, some people don't like, and are not really interested yeah, I think Suicide Squad right now is just very, very hyped up because of the, the film. Um, but Suicide Squad has been one of my most favorite properties since the beginning of the New 52. Before that, um, I wasn't really reading any team books outside of uh, Avengers and uh, Justice League and Teen Titans. But I decided to pick up Suicide Squad when, when the New 52 came out. And I actually liked it a lot uh, up until they added, like, Duella Dent and Deathstroke and, and Black Manta. Uh, I thought it kind of lost steam from there. So uh, hopefully Rebirth tries to do something new with it. But right now I, I'm just not that up on it as uh, either. So Yeah, and two other books I'm not really interested in and I don't think I'll like, but I think some people will like is the Hellblazer, like Constantine Hellblazer, and Batman Beyond. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Batman Beyond. Um, I'm surprised they're doing that again. Like, I'm surprised they're giving this a second chance. 
Yeah, I, I feel like uh, it's it's one of those things where it's so popular that they kind of have to make a comic out of it, out of obligation. Uh, but it's it's just not. It doesn't fit into this world. It needs to be its own thing and not cross over with with what's going on now. And Future's End, the whole tie-in with Tim Drake being Batman Beyond, was one of the worst thing things I've ever read in my entire life. So. I mean, Terry McGinnis is back, but I just don't care that much. I'd rather just stick to the TV show and enjoy it as its own separate thing and not part of the greater DC universe. Yeah. What I thought about Batman Beyond, I'm like, wow, they're doing this again. Like, sure, like, Terry McGinnis is going to come back, but they've already ruined Batman Beyond enough. Like, with Future's End and Tim Drake and Brother Eye, they've kind of already ruined it enough. And also, it's still being wrote by Dan Jurgens, who is doing action comics, I think, and who's doing a very great job, but it just doesn't seem like Dan Jurgens really doesn't care much about Batman Beyond. I mean, maybe they'll change, like, with this Rebirth series. I really don't know, and I think some people aren't interested in this book, but I think some people will give it a try, like, for the first issue and see if it does well and gets them hooked. Yeah, so, I mean, I'll definitely read the first issue um, or two or whatever have you when it comes out um, in two months, I think. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I just don't think it's something that needs to exist. If it's good, then fine, but I've, I haven't read any good Batman Beyond books ever. Yeah, and the next one, like Hellblazer, which I was actually interested in, I was like, wow, like Hellblazer, like this seems cool. But when I read I'm like, Wait, I have a few questions, and also, I don't feel like I was hooked, and the art was not really good, I mean, it was kinda good, but not that good, and I just didn't feel like the story, like, hooked me into the whole series, I mean, we saw, like, Swamp Thing in the book, and, like, Constantine, and all these other, like, magical characters, which, it will be, like, a magical book, it's just I've never really been interested, like, for Marvel, like, they have, like, good magic books, like, Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange, like, those are good books, but with DC, like, they've always been hit and miss, like, with some magic titles, like, Justice League Dark, like, that was a hit and miss, um, Hellblazer, that was a hit and miss, and, um, I think... Like, Blue Beetle, I think it's going to be, like, a magic tile now, which I am interested where they're going with this because they're kind of bringing back Blue Beetle's original origin where, hey, like, the Scarab is magic-related and not sci-fi. Yeah, they're bringing Ted Cord back, so it'll be interesting to, to read that. Um, but as far as Hellblazer goes, I haven't had a chance to pick it up. I definitely will because I'm going to read all the Rebirth titles, at least their number one. Yeah. Um, and the the separate rebirth number ones as well. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I haven't read it yet. I'm excited to read it. Constantine's a very very interesting character alongside Swamp Thing. So Justice League Dark uh, is an interesting dynamic team dynamic. So uh, I'm definitely gonna pick it up. But I mean, I don't really have an opinion because I haven't read it yet. Yeah, and I think like there's one more like like one of my non-favorites that I'm not really interested in, but I think many people do like it, is like Batgirl and the Birds and Prey, which I've never really been interested. I really do like Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. They are very interesting characters, and they're a nice team, but I've just never been interested, and I don't know why. Like, it just doesn't seem, like, interesting in my eyes, which, I mean, like I said, I do like the team. It's just I've never been that interested to, like, go continue read the series and but like still i'm kind of interested where it goes i've read the first rebirth issue but i've just never been really interested mm -hmm. yeah uh, with batman being one of my favorite characters ever uh obviously i i read as much batman related stuff as i can and in the new 52 Batgirl was one of the best books, in my opinion, when Gail Simone was writing it. And then when she got taken off the book, they redesigned her new look and then just went with a new creative team. It it got really, really bad. So yeah. I stopped reading the book from there. Uh, definitely going to try and keep up with, with the Rebirth title. They look like they're doing their best to get away from, like, party college girl Batgirl, which is what they really did with her new redesign, which makes no sense because they... They did the redesign so her costume wasn't as sexualized, oh, and then yeah. they just made her have sex with a bunch of random guys. Yeah, that was... So, 
that was weird. I didn't really read like Batgirl like for New Fifty Two, but I heard the that book was a hit and miss. But with the new Rebirth title that's coming out, that looks interesting, and I actually like that. Yeah, so I mean, they're definitely trying to make the story more like Batgirl's character. Um, that like the core of her character, how she's supposed to be, um, and just try and get away from what they were doing in the New Fifty Two redesign, but. Um, it, it's been decent thus far, I think. Yeah, me too. Um, so, I think another interesting series that I'm not interested in is, I think, like, a few mini series are going to come out, and I think one mini series is going to be Hawkman and Adam Strange, which I'm surprised they're making us a mini series. I'm just not interested in this, like... I was surprised that they're going to make a mini-series about these characters, which I am interested in, like, Hawkman, and I really don't know who Adam Strange is. Like, I really don't, but I... Uh, yeah, Adam Strange, he's he's a character that's been around since um, right after the Golden Age ended. Uh, he, he was with the Justice League, he was with JLA for a while, um, but... I mean, it's just one of those things where it's just like, I feel like it's going to try and be like a buddy cop kind of book, kind of how um, Booster Gold and uh, Blue, Beetle. Blue Beetle work together. I think that's probably what they're going for. It might be fun, but Adam Strange, again, is not a big big uh, comic book character by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, he's been around forever, and he's done a lot of cool things back before the New 52 uh, came about, so I mean, it's definitely a book to keep your eye on, but it it could be it could be a complete misfire. We'll we'll just have to see. Yeah, and I think an interesting thing I found like through DC Rebirth is that like they are bringing like old stuff back, which we did discuss about like for like our favorite things. But I just really love that about DC Rebirth, where they're bringing like the good old things back from like the original pre flashpoint universe and we're bringing back the good things from like the new 52 which i think the new 52 was a hit or miss which i think maybe it was a hit but i just do like how they're bringing back old things and they're just it like jeff john said like it's not a reboot like this isn't like a restart it's just like something new like for the new readers and something new like for like people who have read like dc comics like for new 52 who will enjoy yeah so i mean it's, it's definitely interesting to see how they're gonna go forward with rebirth a lot of people are expecting it to become more like dc comics was post-crisis yeah. and that's what everybody grew up with and remembers um at least in our generation um not talking about the older folks out there who read silver age comics yeah. um but post crisis is really what we're we're all familiar with. So hopefully they get closer back to that because those are the stories everybody loves. Even though New Fifty Two accomplished its goal of re-energizing comic books and it got so many new readers and so many old readers to come back, it was like the high point for for comic sales. Um, but it didn't really deliver with most of its titles. It looks like Rebirth is doing a better job. So hopefully they keep it up. Yeah, I think they'll do a good job, but I don't think I have any more, like, non-favorite DC Rebirth titles. I think DC Rebirth is doing good, it's just some the titles aren't interesting, but I might pick up for, like, the first issue and, like, try again and see if it gets, like, interesting and actually I get hooked with it. Yeah, for sure, and like I said earlier, there's so many books that if you don't like a book, find another one. Uh, don't waste your money on on books that you don't like to read. So just just wait, read reviews, watch reviews on YouTube or whatever you want to do. Find out if the book's worth picking up again, and then give it another shot later down the road. But too many books to buy all of them. Yeah. So, um, do you have any other non-favorite DC Rebirth tiles or favorite DC Rebirth tiles? Uh, no. I think we I've pretty much gone over every highlight and low light that I personally have. Yeah, so I think that's the end of this crossover then, but thank you, Garrick, for teaming up with me. Um, maybe we can do this again with something else, maybe like Civil War 2, I really don't know. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Um, 
Definitely, yeah, for sure. There's there's tons of comic book news. It is like the golden age to live in comic books as far as news and things that are going on and yeah, books definitely. being published. So there's no end in sight of like what we could talk about. So definitely we could be on uh, again sometime in the future, maybe with Jordan, Nick, uh, or Rachel as well. So we'll we'll just we'll have to see what comes up. Yep. Um, but thank you guys for watching, and make sure to like, comment, subscribe for more Iron Reviews, and make sure to check out Key Issue Comics, make sure to check out their channel, they're a really great channel, they also review Marvel and DC Comics, they're a really great channel again, and the link will be in the description below, but make sure to check them out, and make sure to check out my Twitter, at IronHulk018, my name's August, and this was Garrick from Key Issue Comics, and we will see you next time. See you guys. Bye. That was nice.